Hi, uh, today I thought I will show you some um, video of interoperative monitoring waveforms and uh, related things. I hope uh, this will help us uh, if someone is thinking how to review the interoperative monitoring after we finish the case uh, for the reporting purpose. Uh, so here you can see this is the starting point the cursor which is a starting point and also you can see the annotation that is comments patient anesthetized and all SEP, MEP and EMG electrodes in place. So I'm going to start running this that is reviewing the data. So I need to hit this button play and run as soon as I hit the button, you can see the traces are uh, moving. The top one is EEG trace and uh, these four traces are EMG, that is raw EMG, uh, left and right side. And you can see the muscle name, ADM, abductor digitae minimi, quadriceps, tibialis anterior and abductor hallucis and the bottom one is the MEP trace and um, same muscles that is ADM, quadriceps, TA and abductor hallucis and this is the spectral EEG uh, which is uh, useful to find out how deep the pa a patient is anesthetized um, so it, this gives indirect information about the BIS uh, monitoring um, so still uh, we are not recorded any EMG uh, any EMG or EEG or MEP um, information now I'm going to click the baseline so there you can see the baseline and again I'm going to play so that you can see the EEG trace on top and the EMG and the bottom one you can see the artifact this is a stimulus artifact because I'm stimulating the posterior tibial nerve that's why you can see a lot of uh, stimulus artifact over abductor hallucis. And here you can see the EMG, um, sorry, MAP uh, responses. Some are uh, tiny, some are um, okay, but you can see how it looks like. And I'm going to increase the sensitivity so that you can you can see the traces clearly um, usually when you try to establish the baseline it may be a little bit tricky because some anesthetize, uh, anesthetize uh, with a um, gas and as soon as they bring the patient in um, and before positioning the patient they will change it to gas to the TIVA um, so it's always challenging sometime, but not always. Um, so you can see very clearly and beautiful MEP responses. Um, and EMGs are very quiet. Now you can see quite a lot of uh, EMG artifact. Uh, this is maybe due to diathermy. Whenever they use the diathermy, all the EMG channels will fire. So that's why you can see and even it affect the EEG channel. So you can't see any uh, clear EEG and EMG channel because of the quadri uh, diathermy uh, artifact. Okay, so here you can see diathermy. I put the comments and uh, spine exposed, x ray taken for level check, MEP taken, um, it's present bilaterally. 
So I will go to that comment and see. So now you can see the beautiful high amplitude MEP responses. Before it was not there. So I'm going to bring the sensitivity low MEP channel sensitivity so that you can easily see the clear cut MEP responses and it is very beautiful. Um, so the previous that is the baseline was not very brilliant that as I already told you some anesthetist they use gas for the induction then they will change it to the TIVA when the patient is on. So you can see very beautiful MEP responses and uh, we can highlight say like this is the the highlighted one is the response and it's up to you if you want to highlight you can and you can just leave it because you can easily find out from the morphology of the EMG uh, MEP response um, but to show you the actual MEP responses I'm going to highlight um, now you can see how beautiful the MEP response is. Um, so this is, so again I'm going to play and I will discuss about the different stages of the MEP and the EEG and EMG responses. Um, yeah, now I can show you how the SCP traces. So you can see I'm just recording posterior tibial nerve SCP and the top one is the left and the bottom one is the right SCP response. So I'll uh, bring the sensitivity a little bit down. Now you can see beautiful SCP responses and the EMG is very silent. So next stage, this is actually a scoliosis case. So actually what I'm doing is I'm recording the MEP responses in different stages. So this MEP response is uh, taken before the screws in. So you can see not much changes in the MEP responses from all the um, channels. And the next one is after each screws. Um, so if I didn't get a response, I will alert the surgeon. But in this case, the responses are very good throughout the screw inserting screws. Um, now I'm going to um, show you after all the screws in as i said i'll i'm recording the em uh, mep responses after each screws and finally after all screws in um so now i'm And, and also you can see taking X-ray to check all screws position and during this time I usually take um, MEP responses and uh, after that each and every stages say like um, inserting the rod and tightening the rod and bending the rod um, all different stages I'm taking um, EMG uh, that is MEP responses and during this time I'll run the SCP continuously there you can see tightening the left rod and quite often you can see bilateral SCP presence bilateral SCP presence so that mean I am recording the SCP continuously 
and after the derotation i took one mep uh, responses it looks perfectly all right when compare with the baseline uh, recording so i'm happy with the monitoring and um, i keep recording the mep and scp uh, for after uh, the correction complete correction 20 minutes um then final recording that is after the post correction mep that is 20 minutes after the correction so i'm completely happy with the recording um so i'm going to stop because some anesthetist wanted to uh, change it from tiva to gas i hope uh, this is useful and if any doubt you can get in touch with me uh, please comment and subscribe my channel thank you